Hey, welcome back, Cloud Scholars. Hope everyone out there is having a grand day. My name is Kieran Truss, and I'm here with part 10, and this is going to be uh, about automation rules within your Azure Sentinel environment. So your automation rules are really a collective way to make sure that you have an automated response uh, in case there is any type of security incident or any false positives or any type of incident within your Azure Sentinel. That's essentially what automation rules are. So if I come down here to this section down here where it says automation, if I click on there, I'll see the list of automation rules. This is the automation rule blade. And you can see I have one um, automation rule and you know, it shows you the order it's in. So if I have like 10, it's gonna let you know the order that you're in and you can move them up or down if you want to. And this is display name. This is the name of the automation rule. And then incident and created is the trigger. Uh, we have actions, which is a sign owner. Expiration is indefinite, uh, created by myself. And the time was created and the last modified and the status of that automation rule. If I come up here to the top, this is where all the, where it really starts off. You have the option of create automation rule, playbook with trigger, incident trigger, playbook with alert trigger, entity, so on and so forth. But if for this video, we're really gonna concentrate on automation rules. Over here is refresh. You have automation health workbook, uh, gives you a status of what's going on with your automation rules. Uh, you have edit here. So if I were to click here on this rule, I would be able to edit if I want to, if I want to disable it, see the status is enabled. I can disable it if I want to. And right now it's disabled. If I click back on it, I can enable that same rule as well. And if I wanted to get rid of a rule, I can get rid of this rule as well. So it's a quick recap. Automation rules uh, are a way to essentially manage automation in Microsoft Sentinel by allowing you to define, coordinate, and small, a small set of rules that can apply to across different scenarios. So when talking about automation rules, what does make up, what makes a uh, automation rule? So one is triggers, right? You know, define exactly, you know, what, what trigger will allow that automation rule to now go into effect, uh, uh, the conditions, you know, if then statements basically of if this happens, then do this, if this happens, so on and so forth. And then you have your actions, uh, the change in incident. So this is okay. The trigger is, has been alerted. You have your conditions and then also the actions follow. Okay. So you have met all these different conditions. Now what actions should Sentinel do to prevent or to stop that specific thing from happening? So once again, we go back to trigger type. So we have your, when incident is created when an incident is updated and when alert is created. So these are the different trigger types for your automation rule. So I'm gonna bring a scenario into this because you know this is one of the best ways for you to learn is just to have a hands-on experience. So for this scenario, your company is doing a penetration testing. The SOC is getting a ton of full positives and would like your help to stop these alerts from coming into your organization. They still wanna be able to review for compliance reasons, but they should go to a specific owner. The incident should be closed as well. How can you set up an automation rule to prevent these alerts? So let's think about this. So for our solution, uh, first we need to look at the trigger. Okay, we need to say, okay, when an incident is created, then we gotta look at the conditions. Select analytic rules that will assist with filtering out the pen test tool, and then identify the IP address the tool is running from, and then when it comes to actions, change the severity, assign an owner, and close out the ticket. So over here in our automation rule, what we're gonna do is um, we need to make sure that we have uh, a specific analytics rule that we're gonna be using for this. So remember, we're doing pen testing, so it's gonna be something with brute force. So if I come over here to my analytics, you'll see I have two active rules. So one is brute force attack against the Azure portal, right? So this one is in is working. If you do not have this up on yours, all you have to do is go to your rule templates. And then what you can do is you can type in brute like I have here, and then you can look for the one there that you want to use. So there's others There's a brute force attack against a cloud PC. There's a brute force attack against a GitHub account. And then there's a brute force attack against the Azure portal. So you have a number of different things that you can use for this. For this case, I can use the brute force attack against a cloud PC as well. So let's go ahead and create this rule really quickly. So I'm gonna activate this rule and I'm just gonna go ahead and set up the rule logic. I'm not gonna really do anything here. I'm just gonna leave it the way it's set up here. It's, it's, it's good for the default. And now here you have your automation rules that you can choose. So if I say add new, 
um, I can create it here, but I don't want to show you it here. I want to show you another area. And then I can just go to review and create validation passed. And this is good. I'm not making any changes to that. I just want to show you something. So active roles, we have two brute force um, uh, accounts here. And then we have advanced multi-stage attack um, detection. So over here at the automation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click up here, create new, and I'm going to say automation rule. So I'm going to say uh, close out false positive. And you want to test this out definitely in a real world environment. So when it comes to the triggers, we're going to say when incident is created, we have these other two options, but we'll say when incident is created. And then when it has, it says uh, incident provider, what we're going to do is we're going to leave it as all, which is fine. And then analytics rule. So it says contains does not contain. So for the analytics rules, what we want to do is we want to make sure that the analytics rules um, pop up for this. So I'm looking for brute force, which is not here as of yet. Um, I just recently did that one. So um, I'm going to give it a little while for this to pop up and then come back to the video. All right. So I'm back. Um, so for some reason, when I go to automation rules here um, and I click down here, I'm only seeing advanced multi-stage attack detection. Um, normally what you'll be able to see is you'll see multiple analytic rules, but it is taking a little while for mine to go through because I just recently enabled these analytics right here, these analytic rules over here. So, uh, so the automations for some reason isn't capturing it as of yet, which is fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over here to brute force attack against a cloud PC or the Azure portal. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on edit. And in here, you will see it says the brute force attack and we have the severity level is medium at the moment. We can set up the rule logic if we want to do anything here and make any changes. But right here is where the automation response and this is where you could create a new analytic rule automation rule. Excuse me. So I'm going to say uh, close out false positive because remember, we're doing pen testing. So we want to make sure that these alerts don't keep hounding our SOC analysts. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some more conditions here and I'm going to say, all right, what do I want to see? So I want to see, let's see IP address, anything here. So we could say if the IP address starts with, and we can look up the IP for that specific tool that's going to be using and where it's coming from. So let's just do something like a 185.25. We can add that. That's something simple that we can really add here so that this way we can, um, uh, close out this ticket if we want to, and we have other conditions. So there's other stuff we could do with severity. Um, we can change it and they say it equals to, you know, whatever we have the severity, but we already have that severity there. So, uh, let's see what other things that we can change here. If we wanted to, uh, uh from our pen testing that we're doing, uh, so URL process ID, uh, we have a bunch of other different things here that we can utilize for this. Uh, let's go back to the PowerPoint and let's see exactly what we had. So what we had was a trigger when instance created. We already did that. Select analytic rules that will assist with filtering out pen test tool and then identify the IP address the tool is running from. So we're fine. So I actually don't need to add any more conditions. Because the analytic rule was the next part and that's the one that we're in right now, which is the brute force attack. And then what we're going to do when it comes to actions, what we want to do is we want to change the status. So the status needs to go to closed, but we we'll actually put that as last. So we're going to change the severity and we're going to put it to informational because originally it's on medium. If we go back to this general area and then what we also want to do is assign an owner. That was another thing that was there on our PowerPoint. Yep. Assign an owner. So our owner, we're going to keep it to app one team. And then over here, we're going to do one more. And this is where we actually close it out. So we're going to say change status. And then we're going to say closed. And we can add some comments if we want to add some comments. And we can also put a time frame for this as well. And I'll just click on apply. classification, uh, false positive inaccurate data, and we'll leave it as that. And then we'll click apply. Oh, let's close this out. We don't need that action. And now we click apply. So now we have an automation rule here and we'll say review. And we'll hit save. Okay. 
Now, if I go back to automation, I should see two rules here. So we have this one. If I wanted to move this up, I can move this up if I wanted to. And now you see the order is one. If I want to move it down, I can move it down. And now the order is two. Now, what I really wanted to do earlier was I wanted to go to create automation rule and I wanted to have multiple automation rules clicked off, checked off here. In your portal, it may be working. In my other portal, I'm able to choose multiple um, uh, analytic rules to apply to my automation. And then this way I can do whatever actions I want to do. For some reason within this tenant, it's not letting me do it at the moment. And I just enabled that automation, those analytic rules. So it may be taking a little while for that, but that is, that is, that this really sums up, excuse me, the automation rules for your Azure portal. And that's how you set up your automation rules for, within your Azure portal. Um, right over here, let's see, it's still only showing that specific rule. So I'm just going to give it a little bit more time, but if you really, to get a real gist of this, even if I went to analytics, I would be able to come over here. And if one we did was brute force against the Azure portal, we can now do the same thing against a cloud PC. But in order for you to do this in a much, you know, uh, robust fashion, I would definitely say go to your automation rules, click create your automation rules. And hopefully within your tenant, you're getting multiple analytic rule names showing up for you. Uh, within my other tenant, um, it's working that way for this one, I just enabled that analytic rule. So it's taking a little while for that that information to replicate throughout this whole um, environment. But um, that is the end of this video. I hope that the information I provided you is, is definitely helpful um, in some way, shape, or form. If you have any questions or anything like that, please leave it in the comment section below. Um, once again, my name is Kieran Tross. Here at Cloud Scholars, my goal is to get you from scholar to consultant, and of course, consultant to expert. Thank you, and see you next time.